تازہ ترین خبر سے آگاہ کر رہے ہیں سیکرٹری جنرل اقوام متحدہ اینتونیو گوتریز اور وزیر خارجہ شاہ محمود قریشی مشترکہ نیوز کانفرنس سے خطاب کر رہے ہیں اینڈ آل ڈیلیگیٹس فار پارٹیسپیٹنگ ان دس انٹرنیشنل کانفرنس فار افغان ریفیوجیز مائی میسیج از دیٹ پاکستان از ریڈی اینڈ ولنگ ٹو انگیج ود دی انٹرنیشنل کمیونٹی ٹو ڈیولپ اے روڈ میپ فار future repatriation. Uh, we understand the challenges that you've spoken about. We are in, agree in agreement with you that it has to be gradual, it has to be time bound, and it has to be well resourced. And that's where we would need the support of the international community. And you've acknowledged that, uh, that uh, support has been vis-a-vis uh, -vis the refugees minimal so far. Uh, the other point that I want to make is the new realization uh, that I saw. Realization between Afghanistan and Pakistan that we need each other. We have to coexist and we have to support each other to attain sustainable peace. You need Pakistan for reintegration and Pakistan needs you for stability and peace in the region. Collectively, we can make things happen and open this region to a new era of development, you know, the geo-economic development that the Secretary General was referring to, connecting Central Asia right down the landlocked uh, countries to, to Gawadar, the port that we are developing. The other point is, I was, uh, um, I was pleased to hear from Ambassador Zalmay Khalil Saad that the U.S. has also realized that they just cannot pack their bags and leave, like they left earlier on, that they've got to have a plan of withdrawal. And that plan should be supportive of peace and reconciliation. So even when they are drawing down, they do have a role to play uh, in the region and in Afghanistan. Uh, international community, as I said earlier on, is important. Their continued support will be required. And lastly, we all collectively have to be wary of the spoilers. The Secretary General mentioned there are spoilers inside and there are spoilers outside. So collectively, We have to defeat their design and attain peace. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General. Three bre very brief messages. First, to express my deep gratitude and appreciation to the generosity and hospitality of uh, Pakistan, having received for 40 years millions of Afghan refugees. In a world where so many borders are closed, in a world where so many refugees are rejected or stigmatized, Pakistan has not only opened its borders, but the Pakistanis have opened the doors of their houses and they have opened their hearts to support Afghan refugees. Pakistan has provided the world with a global public good supporting Afghan refugees, and it's time for the international community to assume its responsibilities and to support Pakistan very meaningfully in this generous uh, uh, hospitality towards Afghan refugees and support Afghan refugees in their obviously difficult situation. Second message, paying tribute to the resilience and the courage of Afghan, Afghan refugees, Afghan displaced, Afghans living in very dramatic conditions in their own country. And to say that it's time for Afghans to have a chance for peace it's time for Afghans to have a chance for development of their own country. And the second message is that there is an opportunity for peace we cannot miss. We have not the right to miss this opportunity. No Afghan will forgive us if this opportunity is not seized. It is absolutely essential that uh, all Afghan leaders and all members of the international community do everything possible to make peace become a reality. I'm very encouraged by 
the strong commitment of Pakistan to peace in Afghanistan. And it's also very important that the whole of the international community, once peace is achieved, decides to invest massively in, Pak in Afghanistan to allow for the country to be able to develop itself and to create the conditions of prosperity that are needed for Afghans to return, to return and face a new and prosperous life and uh, for peace in the region to be consolidated forever. Uh, I want to once again express my great uh, uh, gratitude for the wonderful hospitality I'm enjoying here in uh, uh, Pakistan and for the excellent opportunities that were given to me to participate in uh, so many events uh, in which Pakistan is contributing so positively, not only for uh, the support to Afghan refugees, but uh, for peace and uh, for international cooperation and support of the UN in this very important moment we are living together. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. High Commissioner for Refugees. I really don't want to repeat what has already been said, which is, says it all, other than one, of course, thank very much the government of Pakistan for organizing this conference. I think it is important to sometimes uh, take a little step back, reflect on a long time situation and try to uh, catalyze interest and support. One, because of course, as uh, both uh, the foreign minister and the secretary general have said, we have an opportunity here. We must hope that we have an opportunity here. I, I said it earlier in the panel, you know, Afghans are among the most disappointed people in the world. We can't disappoint them again. It would be really a betrayal this time. And, but I think that all that we heard about commitments to peace, uh, commitment to cooperation between Afghanistan and Pakistan and, and in the region uh, is, provides a very good framework for, for solutions. Just an additional practical element. Um, in December, um, we organized a global refugee forum. Actually, Pakistan was one of the five convening countries together with UNHCR and not by chance, it's because of its very important role in hosting uh, 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 Afghan refugees for four decades. Um, at that conference where Prime Minister Imran Khan was present, uh, we launched a platform uh, to rally more support for solutions uh, for Afghan refugees. And I really would like to use this opportunity to send a message to donors in particular, to uh, provide support through that platform. We've had now for eight years a solution strategy for Afghan refugees. As the foreign minister said, we are struggling to mobilize the resources necessary. Now it, it would be really contributing to failure if those resources were not mobilized. So the resources should be first and foremost to create conditions in Afghanistan for people to return, the roadmap that the foreign minister is talking about. But of course, we also need resources to continue to uh, support uh, Pakistan and Iran, by the way, in hosting still so many Afghan refugees. So a strong appeal to mobilize resources around this platform. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. High Commissioner. Thank you to everyone. We'll start taking questions. I'll ask you, please, identify yourself, your organization, and try to stick to the topic. I may have to pass it to the next person if it's an irrelevant question. Can we get the mic there, please? Thank you. This is Mateen Hadi representing GTV Network. Question is to uh, Secretary General UN. Repatriation of Afghan refugees back to Afghanistan is linked with the peace and stability in Afghanistan. And our foreign minister has rightly talked about a roadmap. So question is, who will push forward the peace and reconciliation process? What role United Nations can play? Although Ambassador Zalmay Khalilzad held many rounds of talks with Afghan Taliban, but we don't see any progress in the peace and reconciliation process. So peace is uh, deeply linked with the repatriation of Afghan refugees. And if peace is not there, definitely it's not possible to send refugees back. And connected to this, Pakistan faced brunt of terrorism from across the border. 
So there are safe havens of the terrorists operating very easily on Afghan territory. What message, Excellency, you will give to Afghan leadership on this? Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, as I mentioned in my intervention, the UN is ready to participate uh, in any of the peace talks that will uh, take place, and namely in the Afghan-led and Afghan-owned process of reconciliation. And uh, uh, those peace talks, uh, of course, will need the assistance of different organizations. The UN is totally at the disposal of the Afghans and totally at the disposal of the other actors in order to participate in the peace process and to help to consolidate it. On the other hand, uh, uh, it is clear that uh, peace among the key Afghan actors is a absolute must in order to fight terrorism effectively. Because it is in a context of conflict that terrorism can spread and terrorism can prevail. And so we believe that uh, uh, if peace is established, if all key actors of the, uh, Afghanistan come together, then it will be possible to isolate terrorist groups and it will be possible to have a meaningful international support uh, a, a, in order to neutralize any terrorist activities in uh, uh, Afghanistan. And uh, the UN Office of Counterterrorism is at, entirely at the disposal of uh, Afghanistan to support that process. I'll just add uh, just a line or two. You know, you asked about what role the, the Secretary General has pointed out that their role is going to be a supportive role, and he's reiterated that. But the most important role has to be played by the Afghans themselves. What kind of a future do they want for themselves? Do they want to live in peace? As uh, it was said, there is no military solution, and a political solution requires compromises. Are they willing to make those compromises? That has to be decided, and hopefully that intra-Afghan dialogue will lead to those compromises. Thank you very much. We have a question here. Please, please identify yourself. Uh, this is Sumaira Khan, and I'm representing uh, Indus News. Uh, uh, Secretary General, my uh, uh, first part of my question is from you. Uh, that uh, most, of, uh, most of the times that we observe that, uh, apart from all the political turmoils within Afghanistan and some of the time in Pakistan as well, the, the onus, uh, uh, according to the majority, uh, the onus comes on Afghan government as well if they have to act responsibly towards uh, the, um, all the political acts of, uh, that are happening in Pakistan as well. So most of the times it is uh, the political statements that uh, are the cause and that the reason uh, for uh, ruining and destabilizing the entire process. And it makes Pakistan feel to reverse and to strictly go through the entire process of repatriation and to make it as soon as possible. So don't you think that uh, the political uh, government in Afghanistan should also act responsibly towards making things easy for Pakistan and making things easy for Afghan refugees in Pakistan as well? And uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, my second part addresses you that when we talk about uh, keeping refugees, Afghan refugees in Pakistan for more time and we keep on giving them deadlines, so uh, what is our economic condition right now to have them for another five years or ten years. Do we have any plan on hard paper to share with UN so the donors uh, come forward and they also take part in that and to shed some responsibilities and burden of Pakistani government in that regard? Thank you so much. My answer is very simple. I think it's high time for donors to see Pakistan as an essential partner in the protection and assistance of refugees and to see Pakistan as an essential partner in the construction of the peace in Afghanistan, and to correspond to that by a very strong support to Pakistan in the context of the global solution of all the problems we have been discussing today. Uh, well, uh, you are aware of the economic challenges that Pakistan is facing. I mean, that's no news to you. When we talk of repatriation, we have to keep in mind the capacity to absorb. If we keep pushing people, uh, and they cannot be absorbed, then you, s you have seen in the past that there was a trickle back. Uh, we do not want that. It has to be well thought out, it has to be planned, and it has to be uh, you know, uh, synchronized with our ability to send them and their ability to absorb them. Uh, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Please.
This is Arun Shah from Geo Television. Here, sir. Uh, my question is to the Secretary General and Foreign Minister can also add his comments too. Uh, Mr. Secretary, you have been visiting Pakistan a number of times as head of the UNHCR. Please tell me from the cores of your heart that what is the future of the Afghan youngster who who were born in Pakistan and brought up in, in Pakistan. Don't you think they have a very confused uh, future because they are almost Pakistani, half at least, if not full? Thank you. I think there's... As I always say, and I believe it's UNHCR's doctrine, the preferred solution for refugees is always voluntary repatriation in safety and dignity. In all massive return process in the world, there is always a group of people that uh, in between got integrated in the society in which they live because they married, because they have other kinds of links. And let's not forget that beyond the refugee phenomenon, there is a migration phenomenon in this region. And I believe it will be very important for the governments of Pakistan, Iran, and Afghanistan also to establish a very meaningful cooperation in relation to migration in order to be able to address situations like the ones that you mentioned, not with the nature and character of refugee protection, but with the nature and character of the movements of population that take place everywhere in the world, uh, but uh, doing so in, a, in, in a way in which the cooperation among governments allow it to occur orderly and uh, in a way that takes into account the interests of the people and the interests of the states involved. Well, it all depends upon what the Afghan youth want for themselves for the future. Uh, they can take advantage of uh, the linkages that they've developed in Pakistan, having lived here for years. M many of them have been born here, bred here, educated here. So take advantage of those linkages and partnerships and friendships that you've developed over the years and promote bilateral trade between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Attract investments into Afghanistan and from Afghanistan. You are the most natural ambassadors for that kind of linkage creation and depends on, on, on uh, your ability to take advantage of uh, your connections here. Mr. High Commissioner, you want to add? Yes, I wanted to also comment on this question because it's an important one. You know, um, I was in Greece just a few couple of months ago. 37% of the people arriving in Greece to the sea are now Afghans. Most of them are Afghan young people, actually young men. So I think that uh, the, those in Afghanistan that have the power to make peace in government, but also the Taliban um, have a responsibility to send to those young people a message of confidence, saying you don't need to risk your lives being trafficked through deserts, through the sea, risking being rejected in Europe, because this is what unfortunately is happening. Uh, just because you don't have confidence in your future in Afghanistan. But for this, you know, we cannot simply tell these people, as many do, stay back your home because that's where you belong. You have to give them confidence that they have a future there. And confidence passes first through peace and security and second through opportunities. So there needs to be immediately after peace, if peace comes, if peace comes, there needs to be massive investment in, in economic, uh, opportunities in infrastructure, in uh, other uh, areas of development that will provide a sense of confidence for people to return, but also for young people not to leave. Thank you. Please identify yourself and be brief. Thank you. Mr. Excellency, this is Zahid uh, Malik, editor of the Daily Metro Watch. Uh, today's topic is Refugee Summit Islamabad, but the main focus is on the Afghan refugees. As a student of uh, journalism, I have known that Pakistan have a rich history to host the refugees from 1947 from India to, to 1948 from Kashmir to till now we are hosting a lot of refugees from the uh, Kashmir. And in East Pakistan, I, uh, we are also hosting. Why this part is missing? And one innocent question, 
last year, in this month of February, India attack on Pakistan and destroy our trees and innocent thirsty crow. Is UN going to take can, can action against action against the subject? Action against uh, the brutality, action against the environment, because UN is very silent when the humanity is dying in Kashmir. My question is that the trees and crow have no voice in the world. I had the opportunity yesterday in the press conference that was related essentially to those issues to fully respond to that question. And I will repeat the main principles. First main principle, every problem uh, that exists in the world must be solved with diplomacy and dialogue. Every situation in which uh, there is conflict must deserve de-escalation and de-escalation both military and verbally. And as I said, my good offices are available provided that all parties uh, want to accept them. And third, in all these situations, it's absolutely essential that human rights and fundamental freedoms are fully respected. And that takes place there and everywhere in the world. My first part. Thank you very much. We'll move to the next one here. Yes. And we'll take after this the last one. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Fidao and Radio News Network. Uh, first of all, uh, my question is uh, to uh, Mr. Uh, Foreign Minister, to you. Uh, do you, uh, do Pakistan want to the, uh, send back the Afghan refugee, uh, refugees to their home, homeland? If yes, uh, the message has been conveyed to Afghan uh, authorities or Afghan government. And my second question is, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, <coughs> General Secretary, uh, now reportedly uh, the India has denied uh, your uh, mediation role. So what uh, option left for you and on Kashmir issue? Thank you very much. Well, mine is a very simple answer. Do we want them to go back? Obviously, we want them to go back. That's their home. That's their belong. And that's where they should be. So we want to facilitate, and we want to cooperate, and we want to be responsible in fulfilling this obligation. Thank you very much. In Just these circumstances, obviously, uh, we have the role of advocacy that we maintain. And there is the role of the Human Rights High Commissioner that has been several times quite effective in this regard. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. The last question there on this side, please. There, 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 yes, no, the one in the front. The one in the front, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Tariq Mahmood from HAM TV. Uh, uh, all the three panelists mentioned that if the peace prevails in the region, then we will have opportunities of prosperity in the region. Uh, my question is, as Filippo Grandi has mentioned about the situation of Afghan youth, uh, do we have alternate plans? We know that the peace talks are going on and we are on the eve of a peace settlement, but we also know that there are spoilers of peace in the region as well. Do we have alternate plans as the United Nations system have uh, their own system of development organizations for the scale development uh, and the upbringing, the youth of Pakistan and Afghanistan, like the, our government has started a, a skilled development program. Uh, my question is to Foreign Minister as well, can we, in, uh, as we are giving scholarships to the Afghan students to our universities, can we include this Afghan youth for the skilled development uh, in uh, our program as well? And do the United Nations have alternate plans uh, for the betterment of the refugees living in Pakistan? The peace process is going on, on side by side. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, what Pakistan has said that uh, we want to uh, facilitate, and we have been doing that. You heard Dr. Sanya Nishtar uh, speak earlier on in the panel, and she said, we did not differentiate between a Pakistani patient and an Afghan patient. They were all treated alike. There were no cues. There was no distinction made. That was our approach. Human universal approach, one. Do we have alternative plans? Our plan is that the process should succeed. And we have fulfilled our side of the deal, bringing people to the negotiating table, 
creating that enabling environment where people could sit and talk face to face. The rest depends on the Afghans. We will be friendly, responsible neighbors. We will be facilitators and we are doing what we can to create that environment so that these people can go back. Let me add to the last question. Sorry, I'm sorry, sir. Please let, sit let, down. Let me finish it. Let's. Mr. High Commissioner, you want to add to this one? Please sit down. No, no, no. It's, it's not you who have to ask me to sit down. Let me put a question. Mr. High Commissioner, please. My question is, uh, my name is Saleh Lafar. I'm from the News Times of the newspaper. My question is for the sec UN Secretary General. Mr. Secretary General, last year, India altered the status of Kashmir. And since the dispute is very much of the refugees since we have the history that whenever we had been sending them they come back again thank you very much thank you before we take this one can we go back to the last one mr high commissioner yeah i just wanted to flag an important point that you raised i was in quetta two days ago and met many afghan refugees the most um, frequent request that they had, especially well, the young people, scholarships, 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 scholarships. So I think that uh, when I spoke about this platform to mobilize more support, it has to be also oriented to uh, projects that capacitate people. If you educate refugees well, when they go back, they'll be able to contribute to rebuilding their country. So definitely this is an area that we will continue to work on. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General, with your concluding remarks. Well, I had the occasion to say yesterday that in all circumstances, Security Council resolutions need to be respected and that uh, uh, we need to have full respect for the human rights of the people involved. Thank you very much. With this, we conclude the press conference. Thank you to all the speakers. Thank you. ناقزینوں کے حوالے سے آج ہونے والی کانفرنس اور اس کانفرنس کے بعد وزیر خارجہ شاہ محمود قریشی سیکرٹری جنرل اقوام متحدہ انتونیو گوترز اور یونیٹ سی آر کے سربراہ اسلام آباد میں مشترکہ نیوز کانفرنس سے خطاب کر رہے تھے